Goldfish are the most common fish in the fish keeping hobby. They bring more new fish keepers to this hobby than any other fish in my opinion. There are way too many people out there that are raising these fish improperly though, so we figured we'd put a list together of the things that you ought to know about goldfish. If you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it, click that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you don't miss out on future episodes. We're doing this every single week. But anyway, enough of all that. Here are 10 things you need to know about goldfish. The goldfish we know today are members of the carp family and they originate back to ancient China. I've read articles that state that goldfish have been kept as pets in China for over a thousand years. Obviously, they didn't have them in aquariums a thousand years ago, so they would keep them in ponds and water gardens, and it was typically the wealthy that could afford them. You won't find all the fancy goldfish you see in the pet store in the wild. All of these fish have been bred in farms where they selectively breed them to get the specific look thereafter. I guess the only way you would ever find them in a river or a stream is if some hobbyist carelessly just threw them in there. And don't get me started on that. The beautiful thing about feeding your goldfish is that the industry has taken all of the guesswork out of finding the right food and they've made it super easy. Almost every manufacturer out there has made a goldfish specific formula, so shouldn't be difficult to find. To get more info on the specific needs in a goldfish's diet, we've turned to puregoldfish.com. We are not affiliated with this site at all. I just felt like it was nice to highlight this site because they take all of the scientific mumbo jumbo out of it. They keep everything very simple and easy to understand which is exactly what I like to do. So if you want more information on goldfish, check out that website, puregoldfish.com. Put a link in the description down below. They list three main guidelines to selecting a quality food for your goldfish. One is to check the ingredients and make sure to avoid things like wheat, corn, soy, and rice. These are fillers that goldfish have a difficult time digesting, so it makes them a little bit more vulnerable to diseases. Two is to look for foods with whole fish meal from salmon, krill, or herring. And three is to avoid foods with a long list of supplements. This makes sense because if the main ingredients are of good quality, then there shouldn't be the need for a bunch of supplements. If you wanna take the guesswork out of it and get an amazing food for your goldfish, just grab the goldfish formula from Northfin, it's easy. No, neither Northfin or puregoldfish.com are sponsors of this episode. I just believe in giving credit where credit's due. You have no idea what it's like being with John. If you think it's a coincidence that he gives me tank requirements for every segment we do, it's not. He knows that when I tell you the tank requirements for a goldfish, I'm gonna tell you, bigger is always better. Good God. That's what she said. Here we go. Every <laughs> Yeah. Such a child. You got a gift, my friend. Anyways, yes, when you are picking out an aquarium, you want to get the largest tank that you can afford. I know a lot of websites will recommend at least a 20 gallon, and I guess that's okay if you only want to keep one fish in there. But if you want to keep several, like most people do, you're definitely going to want to get a bigger tank. Not all goldfish get huge, but most of them get pretty big. And you don't want to keep them all crammed up in a 20 gallon tank. You want to give them room to explore and swim around in. If a 20 gallon is all you can afford right now, then just make sure that you have a plan in the future to, to upgrade, to get a bigger tank and do the right thing for your fish. But I can't stress this one enough. No fish bowls. No fish bowls. You'll hear a lot of people say, goldfish can live in anything. Just basically fill up a bowl full of water and they'll be fine. 
While it's true that goldfish are very hardy, as a responsible fish keeper, you still need to do what you gotta do to provide the fish with a healthy environment. One of the things that you'll hear is that goldfish don't need a heater because they're a cool water fish. While it's true that they are a cool water fish, you're still going to want a heater in the aquarium to maintain a consistent temperature. You'll want to keep the temperature around 74 degrees and you're most likely not keeping your house that warm, so the heater can give you those extra couple of degrees and again, just keep everything nice and consistent. As for the pH, they can tolerate a pretty wide range, but let's try to keep it between 7.2 and 7.6. As with any fish out there, consistency is the key. So let's try to keep it in that range and have it stay there and they'll be fine. Goldfish only grow to the size of their tank, so you can stick them in any tank and they'll be fine. I know that sounds ridiculous, but you wouldn't believe how many people still believe that. They believe that about all fish, but it seems like goldfish are the ones it affects the most. Here's the thing, it's kind of true, they will stop growing, but at what cost? When any fish is in an aquarium that is too small, it's going to stunt their growth. When their growth is stunted, their body might stop growing, but their organs won't. It will only lead to organ failure in a short, miserable life. So if somebody comes up to you and tells you a fish will only grow to the size of a tank, I would say back, yeah, they're going to grow until they can't grow anymore, and then they're just going to die. So rather than putting them in a tank that's too small, you'd be better off just taking it out of the tank and hitting it over the head with a hammer. At least it won't suffer. And I would never do that. I would never. We've done a few episodes of 10 Things on specific fish, and in those tank mates segments, a lot of times I've told you, you know what, there's no reason to add any other fish to the tank because these fish look beautiful on their own, nothing else in there, just them, let them be the showcase. There is no fish that that applies to more than goldfish. These fish are absolutely amazing on their own. They have tons of personality, they're very energetic, and believe me when I tell you these fish become members of the family. They become pets like a dog or a cat would. You just have to have one to understand what I'm talking about. Lisa and I have a super secret goldfish tank right now that nobody's seen and no one even knows about. And it's just got two goldfish in there, but if we were gonna add any other fish, there's really only two fish that I would consider putting in there with them. It doesn't mean that there aren't others that would go well with goldfish. I'm just giving you my preferences. And that would be white clouds and danios. These are also cool water fish, so they'll go along well with the temperature in the tank, and they're a lot of fun. They're absolutely crazy. They're all over the place, totally energetic. So yeah, if you need a little bit more action in there, that's what I would add. But to be honest, it'll probably never happen because the goldfish are absolutely awesome all on their own. If Danios and White Clouds aren't your thing, I get it, they're not for everyone. Just look for fish that are labeled as community fish and cooler water fish and you'll be okay. We wanna make sure they're peaceful, they're not fin nippers. We wanna be as non-aggressive as possible, but again, it's not really even necessary. Goldfish, really all you need. When decorating your goldfish tank, there aren't a ton of rules. You can use driftwood, you can use rocks, you can use just a decoration that you find at the pet store. But the most important thing is that you wanna leave plenty of room for your fish to be able to swim around in. Goldfish are known for being plant eaters, so I would stay away from the live plants. If you want greenery in your tank, I would go with some of the fake plants. For me personally, when I think about goldfish, I always picture them in a pond. So when it comes to decorating, I like to use things that you might find in a pond, like rounded stones and plants that resemble lily pads, sort of like the banana plant. Sword plants and wisteria work great too. They grow fast and they give it that natural pond look. Just remember, goldfish will pull and tug on your plants. That's just what they do. 
So if you have roots embedded in your substrate, you may want to tie them down or else you're going to have plants floating all over the place. Most people, when they think of goldfish, there's an image that immediately pops into their head, which is the comet. Comet goldfish are by far the most common out there. You'll see them everywhere from carnival games to wedding receptions and all of that other garbage. And of course, you'll see them in the dirtiest tank in the fish store, which would be the feeder fish tank. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go on a whole tear about feeder fish yet. But there are so many varieties of goldfish out there that will absolutely blow your mind. Some of the more popular varieties would be Blackmore, Oranda, Butterfly, Shabunkin, Fantail, and Telescope. But believe me, that only scratches the surface of the different types of goldfish out there. Some people frown on some of the varieties because of the way they're developed and bred, and they'll go so far as to say they look like little mutants. I can't blame these people because, well, yeah, I mean, some of these are pretty crazy looking. Here's a tip. If you're setting up a pond in your yard and you want to get the next best thing to koi, but you're on a budget, put a bunch of shabunkins in there. They're amazing fish and most of your friends will see them and say, oh, look at all the pretty koi. They won't even know the difference. If you ask the question, how long do goldfish live? You're most likely gonna get a different answer just depending on who you ask. I've known them to live anywhere from eight to 10 years if cared for properly, but I have read articles where people have said they have kept them alive for 10, 20, or even 30 years. Like I said, it all depends on how they're cared for. If they're in a good environment, if their living conditions are great, they're gonna live a long time. These fish are definitely like members of the family and can live as long as cats and dogs. You just have to take good care of them. Do your job and these fish will be around for a very long time. Okay, you knew this was coming, so yeah, let's just get this over with. I wanna be very clear right up front. There are a ton of fish keepers out there that are doing amazing things for goldfish, and they obsess over caring for them. I applaud these people, but let's be real for a second. Most people don't. I don't have any scientific data to back this up, but in my 25 years of fish keeping experience, I've seen maybe 5% of the people that are keeping goldfish are actually doing the right thing for these fish. The other 95% of people that are keeping goldfish are not doing the right thing for these fish. They're treating them like cheap throwaway trash fish. I have a feeling you know I'm right, but I'm still gonna get yelled at for it and you know what, that's okay. Goldfish are without a doubt the most abused fish in the entire fish keeping hobby. It's possible that they're the most abused animal on the planet, but maybe I'm a little biased. From people winning them in carnival games to housing them in small fish bowls and using them as food for their other fish, goldfish are basically looked at as disposable trinkets rather than animals. I think the worst thing about it is there's not a whole lot we can do about it. It's just kind of the way it is. This is the world we live in. Getting a goldfish as a prize in a carnival game is gonna make mom and dad pay all kinds of money to the carny to make sure that their little angel has as many opportunities as they need to to get that ping pong ball in the little bowl and knock that goldfish right on his head. And you're never gonna convince feeder fish people that their precious little fish can actually be converted to pellets and they don't have to keep feeding them those nasty goldfish. They're just never gonna believe you. And there's more, you're also never gonna stop those people that say, I give my fish, feeder fish, every once in a while, just as a treat. Really? A treat? Look in the comments if you don't believe me. I promise you, somebody's already commented the treat word. What about the ones that say, I feed my fish feeder fish because that's what they'd be doing in the wild. I even had somebody recently comment and say, I give my fish feeders because that's what they do in the wild, dummy. Why do I do this? 
First of all, the Oscars that you're gonna find at your local pet store don't know anything about being in the wild. And secondly, if they were in the wild, I promise you it would not be Comet Goldfish that they'd be swimming around the Amazon chasing. Anyway, we could go all night long on this, and I know that there's a lot of people that are sick of hearing it. We've talked about feeder fish in three of the last five 10 Things episodes, and I promise you, this is it. We're not gonna talk about them anymore. At least I don't think so. But yes, that's gonna be it for feeder fish. I hope you can tell that this is something that Lisa and I are both very passionate about. It's the only reason we keep bringing it up. We're not trying to be annoying, I promise. So there you go, 10 things that you should know about goldfish. We upload a new episode of 10 Things every single Sunday. So if you liked this type of content, if you find it helpful, maybe find it entertaining, maybe you should subscribe to this channel because you don't want to miss next week's episode. Next week's episode is going to be a big one. It's going to be the start of a three-part series, hopefully three-part series. Might only be two, but I think it's going to be three. Anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. You're not going to want to miss it. Trust me on this one. So thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to talking to you again next week with 10 more things.